All right, YouTube. Today is going to be a good day. You see, I got bags of fish here. And no, I did not get them from Fred Meyer. But let's see what we got. Unfortunately, uh, I don't have a table in this room anymore because it now has a tank on it. So I'm going to have to do this on the floor until I can make space for another table. So I just picked these guys up. Uh, we're going to save this one for last. Yep, definitely saving that one for last. Set that one over there. Here I got my... Tetris here. Look at all that junk over there. That's where my table is going to go as soon as I move all that junk out. So I don't mind that. Here I got my Ember Tetras. Uh, this is going to go on the 30 gallon long that I just remade. that over here what we got next oh, my, oh let's just do this in front of the camera here are my orange flash of pistos which appear to be all males that's incredible I've never ordered a pistos and got all males uh, yep yeah, he wasn't lying all males can't really tell. But I'm looking to start breeding these guys and uh, it doesn't help that I don't have any females. So what he did for me, he threw in one female. He had one female in his tank. So I scooped her up. So now I'm going to have, hard to get a picture of that. There she is. So I'm going to have six males fighting over one female. That should be a bloodbath. Got to keep an eye on those guys. Uh, what else do we got in this bag? Well, this is, these guys might be hard to see too. Pygmy quarries. Somewhere, kind of. We'll uh, take a look at those once they're in the tank again. A uh, couple more bags here. If I can get them out. These guys are going to be a mouthful to say. These are Copatochromus, uh, Trey, Ovase, Mulatto, Lacomo, something like that. And hopefully, six of them in there. Be pretty cool. I love Copatochromus. Uh, for the most part, they're all pretty peaceful, and they get pretty big, too. So, I do like that. And another bag here. These are going to be... What well, used to be Pseudotrophius uh, Aurora, which is one of my favorite. They're not Pseudotrophius anymore, uh, technically, but I still call them Pseudotrophius Aurora. And these are some of my favorite. I used to breed these guys, but I don't have them anymore, and I really wanted them again. So, but they will share a tank with the Copatochromus as they're growing out. And now, for the grand finale, super excited about this guy. i not even be able to see him. I spooked him. Where'd he go? Uh, uh, there he is. An MBU puffer. And this guy is pretty big, too. Super expensive, but, okay, he's going to be sweet. Uh, I'm going to get these guys all acclimated, and then I'll do another video of them in the tank. Uh, I'm going to do that as quick as possible, so I'm going to go. All right guys, so I got this uh, 33 gallon long that I put the orange flash in. This is the biggest male right here. Actually pretty good looking. Uh, and I think I did end up with a female or two, so pretty glad about that. But uh, this tank is pretty gnarly. And I just made remade my 30 gallon long 
This is a 33 gallon long, and this is going to be my next remake. Is uh, rescaping this tank here. Look at this guy here. Let's see if I can get him. Big fat female Amano shrimp with just a billion eggs in her. It's pretty neat. Uh, what else? I got the lamp Achilles in here. A random guppy. Aspidora. Uh, what else? Obviously the pseudomagills you see flying around everywhere. So, yep, this uh, this will be the next redo, remake. Let's see if I can see that big male one more time. Still stressed out, but uh, might have already found himself a female to pair up with. So I have to put a pot in here for him. Maybe a cichlid stone. Alright, on to the next ones. So here is the 30 gallon long the ember tetras. Well, they've been loose a couple minutes now and already starting to turn red. Obviously schooling, which is just awesome. I also put in, uh, after I shot that video, I scooped out some of these uh, neon green rasboras from that 33 gallon long as they were getting picked on being so small. So they're in here, they're happy. The quarries are having a tougher time of it. They're just kind of, that guy's doing all right. There's one over here that's not looking too hot. There you go. This guy is just skinny as all get up. That seems to be the only one having some problems. Everything else is doing pretty well. There are some other fish in here too, but they're probably scared off with all the new buddies they got now. I put my Oki Finoki Pygmy Killifish in here. Yeah, they're all hanging out on the rock. It's pretty sweet. The nice thing about these Pygmy Quarries, and basically all Pygmy Quarries, is that they school mid-water which I think is pretty neat. They'll just all group up and float in one spot, so that's pretty cool. Rotala is starting to grow up in the back there. So this will be pretty cool once they all get settled in. Small little school of neon green rasboras and the emperor tetras. I think the green and the red will look pretty good together. On to the next guys. All right, down here we have the new cichlids I got, and uh, this kind of a mistake I made is I didn't forget ordering these guys, but what I did forget was getting a tank set up for them. So I just rushed and threw this tank together. Uh, this is the nice thing. I, well, I learned this very early in getting into this hobby is that instant cycling a tank. Basically these sponge filters, I have extra sponge filters in a lot of my tanks specifically for this reason. Uh, mainly it was, you know, somebody post on the local forum, hey, my mom's kicking me out of the basement, I gotta get rid of my fish today. And uh, you know, that happens quite a bit, so we gotta jump on these deals, people give them away for free and you gotta be quick. And you got to be ready to have a tank, you know, just set up and ready to go. So I'm, I always have a tank ready. Uh, you know, I got like probably 20, 30 aquariums in my garage that are just empty. So at any point, I can just grab one, throw in a cycled sponge filter. I always throw in some Java moss uh, just to help. All these decorations are out of other uh, cycle tanks as well, so they all have beneficial bacteria on them. And I've never had a problem. My water is really, really low in chlorine, but I still treat it with Seachem uh, Safe just to make sure it doesn't kill off any of that beneficial bacteria. And uh, you know, it's worked really well for me. But let's look at the fish. So these are the Copatochromus Trewavase Mulatto Lacoma. Uh, 
if I'm not pronouncing that right, well, too bad, deal with it. And then the, the Aurora here. These guys are smaller than I was hoping, but price was right. No problem growing out fish. That's actually something I get a lot of enjoyment out of is watching them grow up, so buying them small is perfectly okay with me. And since the Copatochromis are peaceful, even though they're 10 times the size, they should leave them alone. Plenty of spaces to hide. You can see they're already swimming around. Already doing great. They're getting more colorful. So pretty excited. These are the second Copatochroma species I have. The other being the Borrelii redfin that I've been breeding for a while, but I'm probably going to get rid of all of them and just stick with these guys here. You know, something new. Alright, so on to the big guy. Let's go take a look at my new puffer. Alright, so this is a 20 gallon long where the puffer is going to be while he gets treated. Uh, just to make sure that he does okay. I like to use smaller tanks because it costs less in medication. But there he is. I would say this guy, oops. If we could turn around and get a side shot at him. He's probably five, six inches. Uh, I was really on the fence with getting one of these. Uh, you know, everybody loves these fish, but I've just had the worst luck with puffers. If you look back on an older video, I had a hairy puffer who died. I don't know why. Uh, basically, one evening I was sitting here watching him eat snails, and then the next morning I got up and he was dead. And so that really turned me off. And a couple months later, I got a Congo puffer who killed himself the very first night. Uh, basically, he somehow wrestled off, or the intake fell off to the over or to the hang on back filter, and he decided to swim up the tube. And of course, you know, the propeller started attacking him, he thought, but he uh, puffed up, and his whole belly went right into the impeller and was shredded. He survived it. I treated him, I tried to. To nurse him through it but the fish is missing his belly he's not gonna live but uh, he made it about two more days and that was actually really recent I was pretty bummed about that uh, yeah actually I didn't really do anything for like a week if you look at my channel there was like a week where I didn't post any videos or anything uh, I just I was just bumming on, the, on that Congo puffer so I don't know I decided to try one more time and I figured you know might as well go big. This guy, I think, was 130, 140-ish dollars. Not really sure. I wish he would come out of the corner. I've been overfeeding this tank like crazy, so you know the gravel's not the cleanest, but there is just a crap ton of snails in here for him. Uh, I threw in some cherry shrimp in case he wants to try to snack on some shrimps. I'm kind of concerned. I don't know if this, I mean, he's got kind of like a hazy eyes, both of them. I don't know if it's going to zoom in on that. Probably not. You can kind of see it there. Both his eyes are like that. They have kind of a spot over the pupil. So I'm hoping that that's just normal. I'm about to go Google it and do some research. Man, this guy is just a beauty. Can't wait till he gets settled in and feels comfortable coming out of that corner. So that's it for today. New Fish Friday. Gotta love it. I'll uh, see you guys next time.